If you don't want to live with my parents, then we are getting a divorce. My husband, Tom, said this to me with a serious face. To that, I try to reply with, but. But then he starts to scold me as if we are in a manly fight. I am an only child, so it is my duty to take care of my parents. You knew about this, and now you're saying you don't want to live with my parents? This is not allowed. I was so surprised that I couldn't say anything back to Tom. When I should have. I am not opposed to living with the in laws, but I am just feeling very frustrated and stressed all the time with extremely unreasonable demands from my husband and in laws. Since my husband, Tom, was an only child, he seems to have been raised with a lot of, well, too much love from his parents. Tom was so spoiled that even as a child, he got anything he wanted, and the in laws just praised on anything and everything he did. To my surprise, his parents bought him a semi double luxurious bed, which cost $3,000 just because he said, the bed is too firm once. This happened when he was just a university student. Since they were that kind of in laws, even after we were married, they would come to me with many unreasonable demands. For example, my mother in law raised her eyebrows when she saw me buying and cooking a large bag of chicken thighs, which was affordable, when we were tight on money like the day right before payday. Stella! Recently, Tom has been complaining that your cooking is not yummy and not satisfying because you only cook chicken thighs. Just because it's cheap, don't cook poorly, and sometimes, why don't you try to cook something delicious? Since my mother-in-law, Clara, would say such thing, I would try to cook a pork steak. Then my father-in-law, Richard, would grumble. Isn't pork steak what poor people would eat? Since Tom is working hard and earning enough, shouldn't you make him praise him by making him a beef steak? I seriously feel bad for Tom for marrying a wife from a poor family. If Clara and Richard would think for a second that Tom is not satisfied in any way, they would immediately blame it on me and complain it to me. Also, they would say how they pity Tom for it. Really, every time I would see my in-laws, I feel very stressed. But Tom is an only child. I knew one day he would say about living with the parents, so I was being prepared for it. I am also an only child too, and only had my father Bob. We were well off, and Bob raised me all on his own. Bob was really good at house chores too. So every time I would go back and visit him, that's all I needed to do. Bob also didn't expect anything from me. I understand that you already have too much play on yourself by dealing with the parents-in-law. No need to worry about me, Stella. Every time I visit him, he would always tell me that and also make sure that he was very proud of me for it. Perhaps, it was because of those words from my father, I was able to withstand the unreasonable demands from Clara and Richard. Just then, my father passed away. According to my father's friend, Sam, who came to the funeral, told me that Bob had been suffering from cancer for several years. He probably kept it a secret from me to not be a burden on me. He did not show any sign of cancer, nor even a hint of illness to me. My father, who spent many years as a single parent, never revealed his illness to me until the very end, just because he loved and cared and didn't want to be any burden to me. To think about my father, I couldn't stop crying. Your father was too young to die, Stella. Clara and Richard, who came to the funeral, greeted me. Us too. We never know if we will become sick and be hospitalized. I am too horrified to think about dying alone, 
not even see my child next to me when I am dying. Yes, after all, if you are the child, you have to take care of your old parents. We are getting old too, you know. Instead of grieving for my father, nor caring for my feelings, Clara and Richard implied that I was the filial daughter and that they pity my father, and above all, she pressured me to take care of them as Tom's wife. Since what they were saying to me was so rude, I was about to say something back, but then I saw my father's smile in the portrait. It's okay, don't worry about me. You are doing a good job, Stella. My father's words and his kind smile came back to my mind, and I managed to swallow the words that were almost coming out. It was near the end of the funeral that I discovered that my father's estate included a large tract of land in New York. Sam, who had kept the will, handed it to me. Such a big land and is one of the nicest places in New York. It will be a waste if you don't use it wisely. Back at home, I was reading the will when Tom snatched it up from me, and after he read it, he spoke to me with excitement. Hey, what do you think about building a two-family house here and living in with my parents? Don't you think it's a great idea? Two-family house? I was too shocked. I just repeated the words. Why is my husband deciding on how to use the land I inherited to suit him and his parents? It's too early to make a decision about it. Let me contemplate about it. What are you saying? There's no need to contemplate about it. For this kind of things, you should make fast decisions. Besides, I have been thinking about how to live with my parents for a long time now. Then came with this inheritance of a land. Perfect! I bet God is telling us to build a two-family house on this land, don't you think so? I don't think so at all. There wouldn't be a god who would suggest such thing. I took a very deep breath and told him, Wait, since I am the one who inherited this land from my father, let me contemplate on how to use this land. Wife's things belong to her husband's also. Tom yelled back at me. Besides, you have been living off my income, and when you inherit a land, you're saying it only belongs to you and you alone. Isn't that too convenient? If you are saying such things, then stop using my money. I didn't say it belonged to me and only belonged to me. Since I am the one who inherited it, I have my say in how to use this land and I wanted you to hear me out about it. If you have a better idea than mine, I'm all ears. Tom crossed his arms and glared at me as if to say, say something. I can't think of any because it's too sudden. See, I knew it. There isn't any better idea. Wait, let me do my researches and let me choose the best way to use this land. We don't have that kind of time to contemplate on it. Tom turned his back to me. At this time, I couldn't talk to him any further. After this conversation about the inheritance of the land, I tried several times to discuss about it, but Tom would not listen to me at all. The only thing he would say back to me is, we're building a two-family house. Sam, whom I spoke to briefly at the funeral, called me to check on me several times because he was concerned about me. Now that my father has passed away, Sam was my only source of comfort and thanks to him, I was able to keep my feelings into perspective and remain unbroken by Tom because Sam was listening and hearing me out on what was happening between Tom and I. After about six months had passed, Someone claiming to be an employee of a major house building company called me. 
The house you have ordered is about to be completed, and we were wondering if we could set a date for your final check. What? Ordered house? I repeated in a questioning tone, and the person on the other end of the phone sounded puzzled as he explained. He said the house was ordered to be built six months ago. Tom? What is this about? Did you order a house to be built behind my back without mentioning it to me? I asked Tom on the same day, but the answer I got back from him had no sign of apology. You were taking too much time to contemplate, so I went ahead and decided for you. But you just did it without discussing it with me, which is horrible. If I didn't do what I had done, you won't listen and just be unreasonable and nothing will get decided at all. What do you mean by unreasonable? Is it wrong for me to have an opinion on what to do with my land? It's not your land. I said it before, wife's things belongs to her husband's also. Don't make me repeat. But you could have said something about it to me. Tom just sighed loudly, purposely, <sighs> and said, What a pain in the ass, under his breath. You don't want to live with my parents that much, huh? That is not the point. I have the right to have a say in how the land is used. Anyways, if you don't want to live with my parents, let's divorce. I was surprised at how quickly this conversation went. Is my husband threatening me for a divorce just because I don't want to listen and give in to his idea of building a house to live with his parents? But... I am an only child and it is my duty to live and take care of my parents. You knew about this and you have no right to say no to it. And this is the reason why I have left Tom. I had no hesitation signing the divorce paper. I was treated in such an unreasonable manner. My love for him was gone, and I have nothing but frustration and stress from Clara and Richard. Both Tom and his parents told me to get out, but I preferred it that way anyways. My only regret was that they took my land, which my father had left me away from me. I called Sam and told him what had happened to that land. That must have been hard. His voice was filled with sympathy, but soon became powerful. But don't worry, we'll get that land back. What? Without answering my question, Sam just smiled. After the divorce, I was living in an apartment. I was looking for a job which I was having difficulties, but I was in no rush. I already had a well-planned out plan for a stable life in the future. My only concern was the land I had gotten from my father. I didn't understand what Sam meant, but I still decided to wait and believe in him that everything would be alright because he was my father's friend. Then, I received a phone call from Tom. Hey, you signed a contract to build a mansion on that land. Why didn't you tell me so? You framed me, didn't you? What? What are you talking about? I just got sued from the construction company because I built the house already on that land. Since he called me when I was meeting up with Sam, I made a gesture of questioning what Tom was talking about. Sam just smiled at me and took the phone away from me and started to talk to Tom. Hey Tom, you're speaking too loud. Everyone can hear you. Don't you know how to speak to a lady? The way you speak, wouldn't it be considered as a moral harassment? Huh? Who are you? Sam was right. Tom's voice was so loud that I could hear him when the phone is in Sam's hand. I am an old friend of Stella's father. I have heard a lot from him. 
Stella's father is the one who made the contract to build the mansion. He was worried that you and your parents would use this land without Stella's permission, even though Bob only left it to Stella, so he made a contract to build a mansion before his death. Why didn't I hear about this? Uh, it was written in the will. You took the will away from Stella before she could finish the last page of the will, didn't you? Also, you yourself read only the beginning of the will and felt better about it and didn't read the will till the end, isn't that right? Sam was right. Tom did take the will away from me while I was still in the middle of reading. After he took the will away from me, he never let me read it again. As I was talking to Stella, she told me the truth, and when I heard the truth, I thought you would terminate the mansion contract on your own, so I kept quiet about it. I knew it. You framed me. No, I didn't frame you. You dug your own grave. I did not do anything. I could just imagine Tom's teeth chattering on the other end of the phone, and I felt great about it. And also, I think Stella has something to tell you. As Sam said that, he gave me back my phone. Yes, I did have something to say to Tom. I have something to say to Tom, which he will regret. That is why I needed my time. I was taking my time to find a way for Tom, Clara, and Richard to regret for letting me go. Tom, I believe that soon you will be receiving claim for damages and alimony as well. Huh? The voice of Tom was so loud and sounded so dumb. What do you mean by that? Tom, since you used my land behind my back without my permission, I was so frustrated, so I did my research a lot. And then, I found out. I found out that I was able to claim for the damages if a house is built on the land without a permission. You've got to be kidding me. It wasn't without a permission, because what belongs to the wife belongs to the husband. But I am not your wife right now, am I? As I said this, Tom just didn't know what to say back. That land is still mine right now. Because we got divorced, you and your parents have no right whatsoever to use my land at all. But when I built the house, it was while we were married. Yes, behind my back, without my permission. Without my permission, you have built the house on my land, and because I was opposed to it, you just kicked me out of the house and divorced me. Again, Tom was silent. So I continued. Oh yeah, by the way, all the conversations we had about the house and land is recorded. The fact that you started saying that you will build a two-family house on my land, even though I wanted to have some say in it, and that without my permission, you have started to build a house, and every time I would say something about it, you would just harass and scold me about it, but this is all recorded. I talked and submitted this recording to my lawyer. This is for the alimony. I heard Tom say, damn, on the other end of the phone. Then without any more saying, he just hanged up. Wow, he just hanged up. I had more to say. As I said that, Sam laughed. <laughs> you had more to say? Stella, you go, girl. I know, right? Sam, you're pretty mean, too. You didn't tell me about the mansion. I could have told it to you, but I didn't know if you would be like this to Tom. I am proud of you. Sam looked so happy. I smiled. Thank you. Then, it didn't take long before Tom called again. But this time, he didn't call with thuggish attitude like before. He was so upset that he really sounded like he was about to start crying. Stella, I am sorry. I am truly sorry. 
You're the only one for me, and I still love you. So let's get married again. I can't believe you now. After all you put me through? I know, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'll apologize as many times as I have to. No way. If I get married, you and your parents will get together again and pick on me, won't you? I won't do that. I knew why Tom was so desperate to have me back. After consulting with my lawyer, Tom and his parents had to tear down the house and give back the land over to me. If that's the case, Tom and his parents who had already moved out from their original home will have no more place to live at all. In addition to the mansion construction company's lawsuit, there is the eviction from me. They would have no other choice but to abandon the house Tom had just built. So that is the reason why Tom is sucking up and trying to win me back, hoping that I will somehow drop the lawsuit against them and do something about the mansion contract about it. Or there were other ways I could have helped him. For example, I could just purchase the house Tom has built. If I buy the house from Tom, of course, it wouldn't be the full price Tom has paid, but at least Tom and his parents will get some amount of money. With this money, they could have started a new life. However, since they tried to take the land away from me, I was not going to show any mercy at all. So without any of their say in it, I decided to have the house they built to be demolished. After Tom and Clara called, then Richard called. We are old and we don't have much more time. At my age, I can't imagine being onto the streets. I will apologize if I've given you such hard times. So can we have another chance? But I completely refused to comply with their demands. In the end, Clara hysterically cursed me, you devil. But this was nothing more to me than a howling of a loser. I replied, whatever. After that, the demolishing of the house was completed and the land was given back to me. As scheduled, the mansion was built on my land. There are many tenants and I have a very steady income. In addition to that, I am receiving compensation from Tom and his parents. I'm getting transferred a reasonable amount of money every month. As for Tom and his parents, they have moved in to a very cheap apartment and is managing to get by. They are in quadruple payment disaster. The damage compensation and alimony to me, the loan of the house which was demolished, and the damage to the mansion construction company. Not being able to pay his bills by his income now, Tom is working a second job. Clara started a part-time job, and Richard is working by cleaning restrooms of a shopping mall. Since Tom, Clara, and Richard have a tight bond, I hope they will continue to cooperate and work together to pay me and the construction company off. I will also keep on checking on them to make sure the payment will not be delayed. I won't lend a hand to them for sure though.